Hello everybody and today I will be sharing with you my personal thoughts on the best DSLR and mirrorless cameras for video production. Alright, so I'm just going to go straight into it. Now the first on my list is the Canon T2i, also known as the EOS 550D. Now this is a very cheap camera, it's currently discontinued, but you can probably find a lot of them for even cheaper on the second-hand market as of now. So the T2i is um, complete with all the basic video features that you need. It has a 1080p video at 30fps and it has full manual control all the videos. So you can manually control all your video parameters as uh, the bare basics of HDSLR filmmaking. So the T2i is going to be a very powerful filmmaking tool and also very cheap. It's not the best, but it is a very good place to start with. Now you can install Magic Lantern on the T2i. A great thing about the T2i is that it has a stable build of Magic Lantern. So with Magic Lantern, it basically gets transformed into this really, really powerful filmmaking beast. You can even shoot raw video with Magic Lantern on it. Magic Lantern just expands the possibilities of a DSLR are by a lot but even without Magic Lantern the T2i itself is already a pretty good filmmaking tool. Now if you're looking for a step up from the T2i you can always go for the T4i or the T5i. Now T4i is a 650D, T55 700D. They are basically the same but right now the uh, you can only get the T55 in the market right now because the T4i is already replaced by the T5i. So basically what you get with this is that the T5i, it has a articulated touchscreen, so you can just flip the screen out and you get a better viewing angle compared to just on the back of your camera. The touchscreen also comes in handy and it does have slightly more advanced features and has slightly better specs and has slightly better low light performance over the T2i, just a tiny bit. Now. If you want to step it up a bit more, we have the Canon EOS 70D. The 70D is in the semi-pro range of Canon's DSLR lineup. The 70D also has an articulated touchscreen. It has uh, dual-pixel CMOS autofocus, which uh, can be a good tool to have, but with video production, you would uh, want to go for manual focus most of the time, but the autofocus is definitely a very good feature to have. Sometimes you simply don't have enough hands to pull focus manually, or sometimes you just need the uh, autofocus. So the EOS 70D will give you autofocus, and the EOS 70D um, tends to have slightly better image quality because the low light performance of the 70D is a little better over the T4i and the T5i. Moving on, Stepping up from the 70D, we have the Canon EOS 6D. Now we are into full frame territory. Now the 6D is sort of a um, budget full frame camera. It's not the best in terms of speed and performance. However, the EOS 6D is full frame and you can take advantage of that uh, full frame sensor and the 6D is just very good in low lights. Now the 6D delivers pretty much the same uh, video quality as the 5D Mark III. However, you will get uh, aliasing and moiré, which the 5D Mark III will not get. However, the EOS 6D is a really good filmmaking tool. So the EOS 6D is definitely something to um, consider. However, it does not have an articulated touch screen, so bear in mind that. But you do get the full frame sensor, which gives you a much, much better image quality. Stepping up from the 6D, 5D Mark III. 5D Mark III basically is quite comparable to the 6D. However, in terms of video, um, they are really quite close. But in terms of photos, the 5D Mark III would definitely have a huge plus over the 6D. However, the 5D Mark III, what you get is better built than the 6D. The 6D is half magnesium alloy, half polycarbonate. 5D Mark III is full magnesium alloy. The 5D Mark III will not get any aliasing or moiré because it's somehow filtered out you will get um, the, a headphone jack for monitoring the in-camera audio on your 5D Mark III, and the 5D Mark III outputs clean HDMI. So if you're going to use an external video recorder like an Atomos, then the 5D Mark III is going to be a better choice. Now, moving on, we have the Nikon D810. The D810 is a relatively new DSLR. Now, 
generally when we talk about video we wouldn't really think about Nikon but the Nikon D810 has really good video quality it has 60 FPS at 1080p which the Canon DSLRs do not have and the D810 is definitely geared more towards a cinematographic uh, video production because it has a flat picture profile so you can shoot basically that flat cinema log um, video uh, without any additional add-ons or picture profiles or tweaking to any picture profiles Moving on, we have the Sony A7S, which is an incredible low-light monster. This thing can literally see in the dark. Now, Philip Bloom has reviewed this camera nice and in-depth. Now, basically, the Sony A7S S is capable of doing 4K, but not internally. You will have to use an, ex uh, an external recorder, and it's simply just insane at low light. It's insane at low light. Even ISO 40,000 is, uh, is actually usable on that camera. So it's going to be a huge advantage when you are uh, shooting video in lower um, light circumstances where you don't have access to a lot of light and you really just need to push your ISO to get the shot. The A7S is also full frame, so you will get full frame coverage as opposed to uh, APS-C. So working with a large sensor on video, um, there are pros and cons to it, but then of course, um, I prefer full frame because you basically have more image quality, more dynamic range, better low light performance, and of course you get more control over depth of field. Coming in at number 8, we have the BMPCC, which is the Blackmagic pocket cinema camera. Now this is a relatively cheap cinema camera because I don't think you can get any other cinema camera at about a thousand US bucks. However, um, there are quite some drawbacks to the BMPCC. For example, there is a horrible battery life, the in-camera audio sucks, there are some user interface problems. For example, you cannot delete videos and um, playing back videos I think you can play back videos, but you cannot delete your videos in camera and I hear it's quite a pain to use the camera, especially when you're trying to adjust settings because mainly the main issue with the BMPCC is about the user interface because the image quality out of the BMPCC is very, very great. It's very sharp. Um, you can shoot RAW on it, you can shoot ProRes 422 on the BMPCC, which is incredible. However, just a few quirks that you will have to get your head around. And it uses SD cards, so you will need a lot of very high capacity, expensive and very fast SD cards given the data rate. So that could be a drawback as well, and it only accepts SD cards. Coming up at um, on the last, number 9, is the BMCC, the Black Magic Cinema Camera, the Production Cinema Camera. Now, the product, uh, BM, BMCC and the BMPCC have really, really small sensor sizes, so that's something um, you would want to keep in mind. So you'll probably find yourself using Micro Four Thirds lenses on those, and if you use 35mm um, format lenses, you will get this ridiculously long equivalent focal length and it can be quite hard to get bokeh on it and it will be quite hard to get the uh, all the wide angle shots given the in very small sensor now the bmcc however can give you very very great image quality it gives you 12 stops of dynamic range which is a lot you can shoot raw you can shoot um, cinema dng progress 422 no problem however again just like the bmpcc it has some little quirks that uh, could make the user experience a pain in the butt. For example, the battery indicator jumps at huge intervals. All of a sudden, you're at 25% and all of a sudden, next thing you know, it's at zero. And then it has poor battery life, just like the BMPCC. The battery is not removable, so you have to plug it in and charge it and then use it just to find out it runs out of battery in a couple of hours. Uh, it only records to SSDs, which are very expensive and it has very awkward ergonomics there's no grip to it so you will you must use a rig with the bmcc if not there's simply nowhere to put your hands on again you cannot delete videos just ui quirks all right so that is pretty much it for today that is my choice for the best dslrs and mirrorless for video do share with me as well what is your opinion on the best uh, video dslr or mirrorless i would love to hear that so that is pretty much it. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.